what is a moderation effect? What is a moderated regression analysis? When do we use it? What are underlying assumptions and how to do it? Hi, my name is Fabian Fuse. In this video, I will address these questions. In this video, I will talk about two things. First, I will provide an introduction. What is moderated regression analysis? And second, I will also give you some ideas how uh, to conduct a moderated regression analysis. Let me give, begin by giving you an example. Think of the case you have pain or you have headache. What can you do? You can take medicine. You can take aspirin. It's a medicine invented uh, by a German company Bayer in 1899. You take the medicine and your pain hopefully goes away. However, there's also side effects, but that's not so much of interest for us now. It, what we're interested in is moderating effects. A moderating effect is something that intervenes. Uh, and in the case of aspirin, that would be alcohol. If you drink alcohol and you take aspirin in combination, that could result in severe stomach bleeding and other effects because you do both things in combination and that results in an effect that is very different from the original effect so it's influenced or moderated there are certain assumptions that are important uh, so that we can trust the results of uh, moderation analysis the assumptions are very similar to regressions because here in this video also we talk about moderated regression analysis. More specifically, yeah, I'm thinking of multicollinearity. That means the uh, independent and moderating variables are not strongly correlated. And second, homoscedasticity. So that means also the variance of the variables are relatively equal. I talk more about this in my video on regressions if you would like to know more. And then for uh, moderated regression analysis, we would also expect that there's a direct relationship between the independent and the dependent variable. In the previous case, uh, uh, taking uh, aspirin would reduce pain. There are different types of moderation variables. We can think of continuous variables, such as age. It could be from 0 to 120. In social science research, we would typically convert uh, uh, these continuous variables into mean-centered variables. That would mean we would uh, compute uh, the mean and then subtract the mean from all variables. And that would result in a mean-centered variable. Why do we do that? Yeah, because we have often small, medium-sized samples. If you don't do that, it could result in multicollinearity, so which would inflate and manipulate your results. And we don't want that. Yeah, that's why we mean-centered variables in social science research. Then we also have dichotomous or binary variables, typically 0, 1. Just to give you an example, and uh, I talk about cats versus dogs, which animals are more liked by people, and that would be 0, 1 variable. Then we also have categorical variables. Could be the example of colors. There are many different colors. Let's say 10 different colors, which color is most liked uh, by consumers. We can't really enter such kind of variable in moderated regression analysis because that's not possible. What we could do, however, then is we would compute dummy variables. It could be you would like to uh, investigate whether blue is a very preferred color, then you would create a dummy variable 1 equals blue, 0 equals all other colors, and then you can enter it into a moderated regression analysis. I talked about the assumptions underlying regression analysis. One such assumption is that the independent variable should be significantly related with the dependent variable. I gave the example aspirin. Taking aspirin would reduce your pain. And uh, so there's a direct relationship between these variables. Then the moderating effect, you know, producing the example of alcohol, uh, would influence this relationship. If you drink more alcohol, then uh, that would not reduce, but in combination with the consumption of the drug, would increase pain. In ideally, 
this moderating effect, this variable, should not have any relationship uh, with the dependent variable. Should, there should be no significant relationship. That's what we would call a clean moderating effect. Some statistic uh, books even expect that this is a must criterion to be considered a moderating effect. Then, however, we also have uh, moderating effects where then the moderating effect does not only influence the relationship between independent and dependent variable, but it also has a direct relationship uh, with the outcome variable. Yeah, so that's not ideal. Some people call it a dirty moderating effect, so we see that. Yeah, but that's usually what we do not would like to see. So far, I've talked about the background and assumptions of moderated regression analysis. Now, let me start uh, by talking about how to conduct a moderated regression analysis. First, I have to say, there's so many different statistical programs that you can use to do so. It could be SPSS, R, Starter, and so forth. Here, I would like to give an overview of how to do it and what uh, uh, the basic understanding, and then you can apply it uh, using the program you like. First, we, uh, we can think of the assumptions underlying regression analysis or moderated regression analysis that needs to be met. So, I would recommend you to check for the effects of the direct effect on uh, uh, the outcome variable. It should be statistically significant. Then, you would probably compare that model, yeah, so your baseline model where you have your control, your independent variables uh, entered, with a model where you add the interaction term or the moderating effect. And if you compare these two models, yeah, it would be very important that you see that your new model, including the interaction term, would add variance or would add explanatory power. There's a significant R square change. Yeah, there you would like to look at that. And then you would also look at the significance effects of your interaction term, of your moderating effect. It should be statistically significant. Also what you would uh, do is to check your, your model for multicollinearity. Because if there's a very high multicollinearity, maybe there's some other underlying reason why we see this statistically significant relationship. Then uh, also what, you, uh, what I would recommend you to do is check for all the effects of the independent and moderating variables, if we have a clean or a dirty moderating effect. I've already talked about mean centering variables. It's very important in social science research, so let me pick it up again. So it would be very important to mean center your independent variable and your moderating uh, variable before you run your analysis. Yeah, because mean centering yeah, would usually reduce collinearity between the independent variable and the moderating variable, which would mean that we can trust the results more. There are also other scholars yeah, that say, oh, mean centering, oh, that doesn't help, we don't need it. And that's also somewhat depends on your discipline and your sample. In social science, we very often have small or medium-sized samples. There, if you mean center variables, you, you can see substantial differences. And I've tried this myself several times, yeah, and it makes quite a difference. If you have large surveys, large data, thousands or millions uh, of uh, respondents, then mean centering doesn't change much. Yeah? And then in terms of disciplines, finance, economics, they're not really big fans of mean centering, whereas in social science it's very common. There's so many different statistical packages that you can use to do a regression and moderated regression analysis yeah, to test for moderating effects. Now, SPSS, SARS, R, Start are probably among the most common programs. I have another video where I talk about the pros and cons of these different statistical packages. I don't really endorse one, but if your main purpose is to test for moderating effects and you do it more in a, let's say, exploratory fashion, there's one tool I think that is extremely helpful that allows you to conduct many moderating effects with just almost just one click, so it's so easy, and that's the process macro. And you can download it for SPSS, SARS, R, and R. 
and it's so handy because it does the mean centering automatically. You don't need to compute variables and you can also just throw in many, many variables and the program will test everything for you automatically. One click and the program does almost everything for you. Great, you have conducted your statistical analysis. Now let us have a look at the outputs. What are the numbers you would be interested in? Obviously, you would be interested in the p-value of significance of your moderating effect. If it's below 0.05, which is a common standard, then we would uh, consider the statistical significant moderating effect. We also would like to look into the b, yeah, the coefficient yeah, for the effect. If it's small, large, and also to understand the effect size a little better, we would like to look into the r-square change. Now remember the model without the moderating effect and compare that model uh, after entering the moderating effect. What's the change in r-square? Uh, how much more variance can the, the second model explain more than the first model? Nowadays also the typical expectation from many journals would be that you would conduct a simple slope comparison. So you would compare you know, the values of the moderating effect at low level with a high level, typically plus minus one standard deviation. Also if you use these statistical programs they can compute it automatically for you or you can also compute that by hand by entering these variables uh, with uh, plus and minus one standard deviation. And what is also very helpful to illustrate your results yeah, through a, a figure that will help you to better understand your results. Let me give you an example of the graphical illustration. We call it the interaction plot. Yeah, have a look at uh, my interaction plot uh, from one of my recent papers. I'm a professor of business, so it's a business context. So the dependent variable is knowledge transfer by repatriates. Repatriates are people who have uh, worked in a foreign country and then return to the headquarters of that company and then they share the knowledge that they acquired uh, from working abroad. In the headquarters, yeah, so uh, uh, they, it would be important for them to be embedded, embedded and highly well integrated in the structures in the headquarters. And then the moderating effect would be communication frequency with the former colleagues in the foreign country. The more they communicate uh, and uh, the more they embed it, uh, the more knowledge they can transfer. You can see that also the slope, uh, the dotted slope, there's an upward slope. Uh, there's a significant relationship. And then minus one standard deviation would be if they have only little or low communication frequency. And then you can see the line is almost flat. Yeah, so then there's no statistically significant relationship. So we would say uh, that the level of knowledge transfer and uh, embeddedness fit in the headquarters depends on the communication frequency. Low versus high communication frequency makes a difference and that would be the significant moderating effect. In this video I talked about moderated regression analysis. Moderate uh, regression analysis can enhance understanding of relationships between variables. Uh, and typical questions would be when, under what boundary conditions can some effect mitigate, increase, reduce, strengthen uh, the relationship or the effect on certain outcome variables. So it's a very powerful and very helpful uh, analysis uh, to better understand relationships. Thus, it is no surprise that moderated regression analysis is a very common statistic analysis and social science research. I would also recommend you to consider it in your research design and in your data analysis. I think uh, we've reached the end of uh, this uh, video. I hope it was helpful to you. I hope it didn't cause any uh, headache or any pain. Uh, and maybe you even feel like enjoying some drinks. Cheers! <laughs>